Hi, and welcome to today's little quickie video. Today we're going to be looking at the basic setup for a rotary table. Now, there's three basic needs for a rotary table. The first is when you want to cut a specific angle. So we're going to be looking at that type of setup. Now, what is that? Usually it's used, we use the rotary table for angular cuts when it is a bizarre angle. And our traditional uh, angular setup tools just don't work. Let's say we want to set up here for a 20 degree, 20 minutes, 20 seconds angle. That is an odd angle. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. The next situation that we tend to set up for is for building a complete circle or producing a disc from a blank part. Oftentimes because our lathe just isn't big enough to swing it. So we'll be taking a look at that as well. And our third situation is a quite common one and it's the most complex. It's when we need to radius the corners of a part, square or rectangular, uh, or even an odd shape if uh, we have hex that needs radius corners. So we'll be taking a look at that. But first things first, we're going to want to look at how to read the graduated scale of the rotary table as well as its vernier scale and also the main scale on the table. So we have degree increments on our main scale, we have minute increments, so one sixtieth of a degree increments on our rotary scale here, and our vernier scale has increments of 10 seconds, so one sixth of a, of a minute. So degrees, minutes, seconds, but the seconds, the best we can do is 10 second increments. Now to set this on zero accurately, I'm going to turn my table with the hand wheel here to come close to zero without going past it. Backlash is a real problem with these uh, accessories, so I'm going to always turn in the same direction. Should I go past the measurement, I'm going to come back a fair ways to get rid of the backlash and come back to the position I want to be in, always moving in the same direction. So I'm going to come close to my zero without going past it, and then I'm going to come up to my zero on my rotary scale here. So let's say that I want my 20 degrees, 20 minutes, 20 seconds angle. I'm going to start by turning my table to come up close to 20 degrees without going past it. So here's my 20. I come up close without going past. Now I'm going to want to take a look at my rotary graduated scale here and bring it up to uh, zero. 20 uh, minutes, 20, 20 degrees, sorry, zero. So I'm going to come up to zero. So I have zero and I'm on 20. So that is 20 degrees. But now I want 20 minutes. This is a minute scale. So I'm going to go 10 and 20. So I have 20 degrees, 20 minutes. And now I'm going to look at my vernier scale. And I want 20 seconds. So that will be the second line past the zero in this direction because I'm turning that way. So the second line here needs to line up with any line on the graduated uh, cylindrical scale or rotary scale here. So. There, that's a line. So a line on this scale is a line here. It's the next one that aligns. And I'm at 20 degrees, 20 minutes, 20 seconds. I can lock that down here. So 20 degrees and a little more, but not 21. So I'm somewhere between 20 and 21. And I can see here that from my original zero on my rotary scale or my hand wheel scale here, 
I have 0, 10, and 20 minutes. We see that the 20 is just slightly past its marker, which is the 0 here of the vernier scale, just a little past. And that's to be expected because I set it up for 20 seconds plus 20 minutes plus 20 degrees. Now, the next operation here isn't necessary, well, at least not in all applications, but my anal retentive self likes things to be nice and square. So, we'll start by aligning the base of this rotary table so that my scale reads zero when this is perpendicular to the longitudinal axis. So my base is aligned perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the table. My scale is set to zero. I know where I am. And now I want to mill, this is just an example, a 20 degree, 20 minutes, 20 seconds angle on this face of the part. All I have to do here is clamp this part to the table. And I want to position it more or less square on the surface I want here to the table. Now it's going to have to be very square, but I'm going to start by just putting it approximately square. And with a finger clamp I'm going to come and clamp it down. Now then I'll clamp it down lightly. Then I'll bring my indicator up to the edge that I want to move at my angle or to my angle, and I'm going to come and indicate that edge and put it at zero, but very, very, very important here. Do not move the rotary table around its center axis. We want the scale here to remain at zero, that's crucial. When we align this, we align it by tapping it lightly with a positioning hammer to get it exactly or as perpendicular as possible to my longitudinal axis. And that means that we'll be at zero here as well. Once it is there, I can clamp it down finally or firmly. And then and only then can I unlock my table and move, as we've seen, my 20 degrees, 20 minutes, and 20 seconds. Clamp my table back down, install a milling cutter, and come and mill that side surface. Uh, with the side milling operation. And I will have milled the proper angle on the part uh, quite accurately. The next situation we wanted to look at was if we needed to mill a complete circle or a disc from a blank part. And let's say that this is our blank part and we want to come and mill that. First thing to do here will be to come and indicate the center hole of the rotary table because I want the axis or the rotary axis of the spindle to be directly above the center axis of the rotary table. Now it is very very important to know that when you're indicating the center of your table you have to turn the spindle to do it. So just barely nudge your indicator in both directions to make sure that you're in contact and adjust your table until you get zero all the way around. Now would be a good time to set our digital readout to zero. Now if you want to cut a disc from an oversized part and really leave the part quite oversized for this that doesn't have a hole in its center, well all you have to do is position it as centered as possible. I mean, don't go crazy here. That's why we left it oversized. Uh, and really these concentric guide circles are really practical for that to help you to get it centered uh, quickly and roughly. So. Once that's centered, well, I'm ready to start cutting once I offset. Now, this is a part that doesn't have a hole in its circle, if in its center. So, if I do have a part that has a hole in the center, well, it's even easier 
to get very accurate because all I have to do is deposit it and see as I haven't moved my table I'm still at zero zero so my axis is above the center of the table well all I have to do here is position my part here and indicate its central hole as I've just done without moving the table but by moving the part clamp it down and all will quite accurately be on center and then I could mill a concentric circle uh, that would be concentric to the center hole that already exists. Now, we're going to pretend that this part is mounted and that we have a half inch tool in our spindle. Now, I want it rough but I know that I'm on center because my tool is above the center of the table. I'm going to want to offset here. How much? Let's say I want a 3 inch circle. Well, to cut a 3 inch circle, I'm going to have to offset by half of that circle. So I'm going to be moving in that direction because I'm not boring, I'm doing the outside. I'm going to be moving here in that direction uh, from the center over one and a half inches or half the diameter of the circle that I want. And very important also is to remember that that tool that we're using also has a diameter. So half of the diameter of the circle that I want plus half of the diameter of the tool that I'm using to cut with. So half of the diameter is one inch and a half. Half of my tool, which is a half inch, gives me one quarter inch. So inch and a half plus a quarter inch is one and three quarters of an inch. I offset that amount, lock my table in that position, and I'm ready to start cutting. So let's say I want to mill a half inch radius on the corner of this part. Well, I have to figure how I'm going to hold it down there. So I'm going to put it at this bizarre 45 degree angle just because it gives me access to one of the slots here and I can clamp right down into that slot. Then I'm going to want to put the center of the radius, which on this part is the center of this hole, right smack on the center of the rotary table. And to do that, well, seeing as I am already in line, well, I can just put my indicator in the hole and turning the spindle, I can uh, indicate that hole and it will be center. However, let's say I wasn't already on center here and I just wanted this to be centered on that. Well, let's say it's offset and let's say I turn the table. Well, that will indicate to me that this hole is offset to the table. So in this case, I could use the rotary action of the table to center this hole. But seeing as I'm already aligned, I'm going to use the spindle with a dial indicator to center it up. Once I'm on center, I'm going to clamp down. And then I can offset the milling machine's table by the proper amount. Now I want a half inch radius here, and I'm using a half inch tool. So a radius is not a diameter, it's already half of a diameter. So I'm just going to do the radius that I want, one half inch, plus half of the diameter of the tool. So that's a half inch plus a half of a half inch. So a half inch plus a quarter inch, that is three quarters of an inch. I will go and offset my whole table by three quarters of an inch. Now, my part is centered on my uh, rotary table, the center of the radius that I want, and it's clamped down. Now, it isn't really, this is just make-believe. But what my part isn't is aligned with one of the axes, and I have to align something. This time I'm going to use the rotary table to align one of the sides. And since is the, my tool is a counter or a clockwise moving rotating tool, I'm going to want this to turn against it for conventional milling. So I'm going to offset this way by turning the table. Now I'm not moving the mill table at all. 
it's offset in its proper position already. I'm just going to turn it to get this perpendicular to my longitudinal axis, and I can check that with the dial indicator, adjusting it with the rotary table. Once I am perpendicular, or I'm zero on this surface, I can note at what angle I am, and that'll be my start point for cutting my radius. I can install my cutting tool, feed down, and cut away 90 degrees further down to get to the other spot. Okay, so I cut my 90 degree surface. Now that's a little too far. I'm just eyeing it out here. Okay, now I've cut my radius. That's all fine and dandy. Let's say I had four corners to do or maybe even I had several of these parts to do. Well, I can save myself a lot of time by once the first part is done, clamping down two stops. It could be a stop, something like that. We'll just do it this way. Remember, if you watched the video on isostatic positioning, you'll know what I'm talking about. So clamp down these two blocks so that I can then come back to my original zero. Let's see, we'll do it. Let's say I come back to where I was. There. Then I can remove the part, put it in for my next one, clamp it down, and cut my next radius, and so on and so forth. So, there you go. Rotary tables, a very, very practical milling machine accessory. I mean, it's good for milling, uh, like we've seen here, and it also is quite good at producing uh, accurate bolt hole circles. Not quite as accurate as coordinate bolt hole circles, but still pretty accurate. A good tool to have in your shop. So, until we meet again, have fun, be safe, and happy machining.